The mistakes made by clubs that reject players who subsequently go on to greatness is a rich source of embarrassment, from Jack Walker's, why do you want to sign Zinedine Zidane when we have Tim Sherwood, to Flamengo rejecting Ronaldo at the age of 14, to Independiente telling Javier Zanetti he was too small to make it as a professional. Yet hindsight can never have been more damning than in the case of Franco Baresi. In 1976 Inter were presented with two brothers, both defenders who had a ton of potential, and both were diminutive in stature. Inter chose Giuseppe who went on to to make close to 400 appearances in the blue and black. Left behind, however was younger brother Franco who moved to the better side of town and joined the Rossoneri. Baresi cracked the first team in 1977 playing his first game for Milan, and went on to make more than 700 appearances for the red and black. In 20 seasons Baresi averages close to 25 appearances a year for Milan, playing the role of sweeper, captain and all-around general of the back. The elegance and effortlessness at which he played the centre-back position was unique, and something that has only ever been replicated by Der Kaiser. Franz Beckenbauer, who had defined the libero role a generation prior. In this video we will explore how good was Franco Baresi really, and why is he still the benchmark for all defenders three decades later. Franco Baresi was born on May 8, 1960, the younger brother of Giuseppe, who was just over two years his senior. The brothers lost both of their parents when Franco had reached the age of 16, but by this time both had decided that they wanted to become footballers, enjoying trials with Inter. Giuseppe was immediately liked by the coaches, not only was he good at controlling the ball, but he was also in excellent physical shape. Unsurprisingly, the boy immediately received an invitation to join the team, but Franco was unfortunate, the coaches did not consider anything in him. Franco seemed slow and too thin to play football well. Franco Baresi biography may not have been like this, but he was lucky. When a 14-year-old boy, struggling to hold back tears, walked into the locker room, he was intercepted by a man, who was on the sidelines for the entire training session. He was Italo Galbiati, who formally should not have been here, the day before he had left the Inter Academy and would soon be going to work in Milan. So, Franco Baresi life story suddenly changed. Galbiati decided to say goodbye to his former colleagues and attended that training anyway. Out of time, the sensitive Baresi fascinated him and the coach decided to take him to the Rossoneri Academy. Even there, he was not accepted initially, as he needed a couple of attempts with Milan to convince them to take a chance on him. Thrust into the world of high-achieving players, the reticent and reserved Baresi could easily have been missed, but, as he grew, however, so his talent was increasingly obvious and he became known among the club's coaching staff for his dedication and focus. Baresi was given his big break in April of 1978 in an away game against Verona. The following summer, Nils lied home, during one of the pre-season training sessions, took Baresi to one corner and told him, you are my first choice centre-back for next season. And as it turned out, the then 18 years old never left that position for the next 20 years. A year after his impressive debut against Verona, Baresi was starting alongside the famous Johnny Rivera, winning the Scudetto of the 1978-79 season, which was also his first full season for Milan, conceding just 19 goals. Despite that defensive excellence, his role was at least twofold. Within seconds of winning back the ball, he would be looking forward. Next came either the clipped pass into feet, or the run forward out of defense. Baresi played the part of playmaker with consummate ease. The libero position was ideal for Baresi. His ability to read the game allowed him to eliminate many attacking threats before they had an opportunity to develop. Prodding his back line into position, tackling and intercepting, before taking the ball forward, he became the leading light of the Rossoneri defense. The title triumph was followed by a brief period of uncertainty when Milan dropped to the second tier of Italian football twice. Once in 1980, immediately after winning the Scudetto, following a match-fixing scandal and when they managed to immediately get back into the Serie A by winning the Serie B in 1981, they dropped down in 1982. This led to a major overhaul at the club, with big players like Aldo Maldera and Fulvio Calavati leaving and youngsters being blooded into the team. Baresi was made the captain of the team at the age of 22. In 1987 Milan appointed the rather unproven Saki. What came next is probably the best period in Milan's history, 
The arrival of Arrigo Sacchi was fundamental for us, for the club, for Milan, after so many years of mediocre finishes. And Baresi was rewarded for staying true to the club that took a shot on him as a youngster. Under the guidance of Arrigo Sacchi's 4-4-2 system based on pressing, possession and free-flowing football, Baresi was the man to command the other 10 players on the pitch. In Italy, you score a goal and everyone defends the lead. And I would say, no, when we score a goal, we keep on attacking. I saw that all the great teams, in order to be great, had something in common. They all looked to dominate on the pitch. Dominate play and control the game at all times. This was my aim. But my greatest objective was to make people enjoy themselves. Dutch duo Ruud Goulet and Marco van Boston were acquired and with a midfield that offered skill, strength and tactical noose, Baresi controlled a backline which also included Alessandro Costacurta, Paolo Maldini and Mauro Tassati, with Giovanni Galli in goal. Sacchi's Milan were Galacticos before the term was invented. Baresi guided Milan to Scudetto success in Sacchi's maiden campaign after opponents breached Giovanni Galli's goal just 14 times all season, victory in the Supercoppa Italiana followed in 1988 before it was time to assert European domination. With captain Baresi timing tackles and carrying the ball out of defense like the graceful sucker he was, Milan swept aside a formidable, Stoa Bucharest outfit 4-0 in the 1989 European Cup final. A year later, on the same stage, the diminutive Italian, patrolling the Milan backline with his iconic untucked shirt swagger, put in a career-defining display as his club won back-to-back -back European crowns following a 1-0 win over Benfica. Added on to that, Baresi lifted the European Super Cup and Intercontinental Cup twice each. Under the guidance of Arrigo Sacchi initially and later Fabio Capello, Milan had one of the best defensive unit on the planet along with some of the finest attackers in Europe. Milan began terrorizing opposition defense and Baresi led the defensive unit from the front, allowing just one goal in more than two matches on average. Franco Baresi finished as runners-up to Marco van Boston for the 1989 Balloon d'Or as he was named the Italian Serie A Player of the Year. More titles followed under Fabio Capello as Milan won the Scudetto and Italian Super Cups in 1992, 1993, and 1994, Milan went undefeated in the 1991-92 season and they conceded a mere 15 goals in the 1993-94 season. Under the former midfielder Milan played a slightly different tactical setup, with less emphasis on pressing, but with a bit more freedom for the players in terms of their positions on the pitch. Here again Baresi thrived, as his displayed his full repertoire of tactical abilities and reading of the game. The Rossoneri would go on a 58-game unbeaten streak to become known as the Invincibles, and they would win the Serie A crown three years on the trot and they established their dominance domestically in what was at the time, far and away the strongest league in the world. Milan also reached three consecutive European Cup finals, losing out in two though, winning the 1993-94 European Cup against Johan Cruyff's Barcelona Dream Team 4-0 in the final match. Baresi was at the forefront of everything good for Milan as he was a mainstay in the Milan lineup. Even with such domestic success, Baresi only made his World Cup debut in the 1990 World Cup, even though he was in the squad when Italy finished fourth in 1980 Euros and won 1982 World Cup he didn't start any of the matches. He was an integral part in Italy's 1990 World Cup, playing every minute in all seven matches, helping the Azzurri to a third-place finish. But it was in the 1994 World Cup that he made a name for himself, quite literally. During World Cup 94, he tore his meniscus in the second game against Norway. Despite being advised to return to Italy and have the necessary operation in preparation for the new domestic season, Baresi demanded to have the operation immediately. 24 days later, after almost continuous rehabilitation work, Baresi was fit for the final, an extraordinary feat. His missed penalty in the shootout after keeping a clean sheet was a cruel ending to such a magnificent story. Franco Baresi retired from the national team at age 34 and passing the captain's armband to Paolo Maldini. Baresi played in 81 matches for Italy, scoring one goal in a friendly victory over the Soviet Union, 
and he is one of seven players to have achieved the winning gold, silver and bronze FIFA World Cup medals during his international career. After winning another league title in 1995-96, Baresi decided to hang up his boots in the following season at the age of 37, although he was a defender, he scored 31 goals for Milan, 21 of which were on penalties. It is hardly controversial to call Baresi the most complete, and perhaps even the best defender of all time, but why is that? Although Franco Baresi was talented enough to play anywhere along the back line, he mainly excelled as a centre-back and as sweeper, where he combined his defensive qualities, and his skill to read the game, with his outstanding vision, performance, distribution and ball skills. Franco Baresi's passing range, technical capacity, and ball control let him advance forward into the midfield to start attacking plays from the back and enabled him to function as a secondary playmaker. In spite of the fact that he was a defender, he was also a perfect penalty taker. Franco Baresi was known for being a resilient and perfect tackler, who was very noble at winning back control, and at anticipating and interrupting plays, due to his acute tactical cleverness, quickness of thought, marking skill and positional wisdom. The greatest attacking players have the ability to manufacture time, a combination of vision and first touch affording them vital fractions of a second to compose play. If they created time, Baresi did the opposite, such was the Italian's masterful reading of the game, he would be first to every through ball, snuffing out danger like a psychic fireman. He was the time destroyer, every second you had on the ball in his opposition at least halved. Some defenders can lay claim to be ahead of the game, on the next page, Baresi was already flicking through the index. A lot of the time, he would know what the attacker was going to do before they knew themselves, Rude Goulet once said of his former teammate. There is no exaggeration there for effect. Baresi had a greater anticipation and understanding of attacking strategies than perhaps any other defender in the game's history. It's not something you can learn, Baresi told 442 in 2009, almost apologetic that he could not impart any further wisdom. It's a natural thing. Of course you can improve it, you can grow with experience, but it's one of those natural gifts. In the history of Italian football very few players can be considered real one-club legends for their teams, but Franco Baresi is surely that for AC Milan. In football, defenders rarely receive the acclaim they deserve. The accolade of great is usually reserved for those that attack and score, Pelé, Maradona, Cruyff, Messi, Ronaldo, none of them won fame for their ability to defend. Of world soccer's 100 greatest players of the 20th century, the only player figuring in the top 10 who could arguably be described as a defender is Beckenbauer, and such a designation is probably dubious at best. Baresi is at 19. The great German was really a midfielder who simply adapted a role to suit him, rather than being a natural backline operative. Baresi wasn't that, he was a defender who excelled at his craft to the extent that his name should surely be regarded in the most exalted of company. Whilst Baresi and Beckenbauer were not of the same generation, many have sought to claim one as better than the other as they occupied similar roles in outstanding teams, at both club and international level. As with the maestros, that is surely fallacious. Although they had complementary talents, they were different in both approach and deployment. Baresi was a player who made mutual exclusivities inclusive, powerful but elegant, ball-playing but a hard tackler, a great defender who so often started and played a part in the attacks of the greatest ever Milan side. The comparisons with Franz Beckenbauer before him became cliched, but with good reason. Baresi was the last great libero, 